Hello, hello, welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Yudi and I go by Yudi on the Glow here and on my other social media platforms. So make sure you subscribe, go ahead, subscribe, hit that bell. All the way. As of now, spring is upon us and summer is right around the corner. And capris are such a quintessential item of the season. If you want to try styling capris and don't know where to start, or want to switch up your usual style, or you could just be dusting off the capris you have in your closet and looking for new ideas to style them, then this is the video for you because I'll be talking about three general ways to style capris. Okay, guys, so before we jump in, if my hair looks a mess, not too much on me. I tried to do like a little bang and I kind of wanted to like the sides to soup up and then this to be like curled out. I feel like I don't know if it's giving what I wanted it to give. I've already filmed another video and if I look crazy there, not too much on me. We came for the fashion out of here. But is it giving a little bit of a mullet? I feel like it's giving a little bit of T-Boss. But anyway, let's get into this video. So my first category for styling capris includes blazers. And just as a heads up, most of the looks we talk about today will be styled with a sling back heel or a mule flat, or you can toss in sneakers if you like, but that'll be kind of like the general recipe. And I kind of have all my stuff set up here. You guys, I got a brand new rack and I'm kind of feeling it. It has everything laid out for me and it folds up. Yeah, this is what I wanted because I don't want anything to take up too much space, but y'all back to this video see this is how i get distracted anyway so like i was saying most looks that we'll talk about today will be styled with a sling back heel you can throw in your ballet flats wherever you see fit you are one who likes loafers i would say really pay attention to the type of loafer you have and how it balances with caprice it's all about that one because a loafer that's a little bit too chunky or a little bit too weird could throw off the whole look so really just kind of keep an eye on those things the very first look i want to talk about is a look with a white blazer white blazer i would go for a black base i already have a pair of black capris that i'm wearing now and i would go for a black top whether it be a black bodysuit with a high collar or regular collar that is what i would go for i feel like you can even toss in you know those gold chain belts i don't know i know i have one but i cannot find it if i can find it i'll show you guys what it looks like in the trial and then from here i would throw on some sunnies i think for this look i would probably keep it simple with either black sunnies or or something that's more of a tortoise shell look so let me show you guys what i have so far i have oops let me see so i have this white blazer that i picked up on sale from h and i'm not entirely sure if this is a blazer dress or just like a long blazer but i'm here for it either way yeah a black base under this i made sure i got it on sale so often if you can find a good sale at h and i would say go for it when it comes to blazers i'm always going to say start at the thrift store because that's where you can find it look in the men's wear sports jackets then also look in the women's wear if you're looking for a good deal so i actually have this from h and it kind of slightly has padded shoulders i haven't worn it yet but this is what i'll go for with my black base underneath let me put this back put it right here so I would go for that when it comes to shoes. You guys, I have a handful of shoes down here. I could go for these black sting bags. I got these from, I think a Burlington or a Ross some time ago. I haven't worn them, but I know I didn't pay more than like $25 for them. I also have these pumps that I've really been enjoying that are super comfortable. And guess what? I got these off Shein. Yes, you heard me correct, Shein. So this is probably what I would lean towards on the feet. And I'll probably also throw in an anklet. Also in the shoe department, if you didn't want to keep it to like your neutrals, like your whites, your blacks, your tans, you can throw in a pop of color. I recently got my hands on these shoes. These shoes are from Topshop and they offer kind of like, they offer that metallic rust orange look. I haven't worn them out yet, but I've worn them in the house. Last time I saw these, these were on ASOS. They never had my size in stock. And luckily I was able to find these on Poshmark for even a fraction of the cost. So this would be my pop of color heel if I wanted to switch things up. And when it comes to bag, that black and white kind of feels a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit more put together. I would stick to this newbie that I got here. I'm trying not to like flash you guys with a glare, but I got this also off Shein. I got this for like maybe $15, $16. This is also very popular at Zara. I feel like the only difference is the chain that you get. And I will say I do prefer the chain on the Zara one, but I get the look for less from Shein. I would go for a metallic bag to keep it elevated. Oh, another thing. Let me see y'all. Let me see y'all. Or I would grab this black bag. So I recently picked this up off of Amazon. This is a bag that I've been eyeing for maybe, I've been eyeing this since last year. And when I saw it online, I thought it would be so much more exaggerated, like even more long and something that I probably wouldn't reach for often. But when I finally just went ahead and got it, I said, oh, this is perfect. This is 
perfect for me. It doesn't feel too over the top for me. And it also kind of gives me that classic, almost like a retro vintage look. So these are just two handbags I would pair with a white blazer, black base, and whatever you want to do on the feet. And put this back. And when it comes to the sunglasses, I'll probably keep them all black. I recently picked up these. Yep, I finally fell for them. When the inflated glasses were in, I kind of like the square one, so I have a yellow pair, but I don't know what it was recently. I saw someone wearing, I think, the white pair of these. And I was like, yeah, I get it. So when I was looking for the white pair, I actually saw where they were selling two in a pack. So I ended up picking up the white and black of these. And I think one random day, like they were in my cart and they went on a flash sale. So I was for like under $10. So, you know, we love a good deal over here. So I would probably put these on top or I have a black pair of oval like sunglasses, which I feel like are super popular, especially with the Celine lip sunglasses that they're still going on strong nowadays. I feel like that would really complete this look and keep this as more of an elevated casual look. So that is one way to go about the white blazer. Now let's bring in the black blazer because I feel like both of these are staples in any closet. So if you don't have a black blazer, I don't, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what they're saying. I feel like I could take that same look with the black base, probably switch up the top and throw my black blazer on top. When I was thinking through this look, it really reminded me of one of my favorite pictures of myself. Just a Capri version of it. I'm wearing biker shorts. So if you're struggling with ways to style Capri, I think it could be helpful to think about the ways that you're able to style biker shorts if that can translate over to Capris for you. For this look with the all black on all black, one of the things I would do to break up all that monotony, granted you can keep it to an all monochrome look, I would break it up with a print. The print I'll break it up with, I actually have some... I have some black zebra print shoes. Let me show y'all. I have these zebra print heels. I feel like this at the bottom will really break up the monotony of all that black and kind of add a little bit of fun, a little pop of something extra at the bottom. And along with the zebra print, I also do love a good cow print. So if I had cow print heels, I would toss those at the bottom. I actually have a cow print handbag that I feel like if I were to keep the look all black, I would probably reach for that handbag just to jazz it up a little bit so it's not so it's not your typical all black look. This is sticking to my lip gloss. That's why I don't wear lip gloss. How y'all do these? <laughs> so this is the black blazer that I have. You guys watch my thrifting video. You guys know I have the refrigerator black blazer that's like super, super oversized that had me looking some type of way. And then I also have one that's a little bit more fitted for like more formal events. So both of them I got thrifted. So next up I have this dad blazer. Um, this is something I also picked up thrifted and I feel like it's very easy to get kind of like that casual but still put together look with a blazer like this. So for this, if you guys are not already tired of it, we can switch up that black base and go for a white tank underneath or a white top underneath. So I recently picked up this tank that I saw at H&M. I love the look of it and the feel of it. It had like the little move collection icon in the middle. I gravitated towards it so much when I first saw it just because of the feel of the material. It felt like something that would hold up and it also felt like a material that like if I didn't want to wear undergarments underneath, I could get away with that because it had enough compression. It wasn't until I got home when I really started to think like why exactly am I attracted to this tank top? I realized it kind of gives the feel of some of the trendy designer tanks. Like remember when Prada was hot and it had like a little Prada logo, then afterwards we had the Loewe one. Now I have my laid hands on the Loewe tank top. I feel like I get probably a better bang for my buck with the H&M one, just based on the reviews that I've heard that the material is not there at all. So if you want to get a similar look or you want a similar feel, or you want to dupe some of the luxury brands, I would say look at H&M. Um, I believe the tank was, it was no more than $15, so it was a great price point. I might need to stock up and get some extra ones. I think I have it upstairs right now, but you guys will be able to see it in my try-on clip. So for this look on the feet, I would keep it all black. I would opt for my black spoon bags or any other black flats that I have. And from here, from here, I would either go for, I would either go for my black box crossbody bag. This is from H&M. Or I would go for my coach pillow tabby to add a bit of color. And I feel like it works well against the brown of the blazer. So these are the two things I would go for for this look. And in this category and kind of throughout this video, you will see a lot of the looks are very interchangeable. Once you have a solid base, you can go from there. So the same way you can keep an all black base underneath and wear literally with any blazer that you own, you could also keep the white shirt underneath and try that out with different blazer colors, especially if you want to switch up your wardrobe and wear your pieces in different ways. That's something I would challenge you to do. Now for our second category, we are going to be talking about statement and oversized tops. So here we really want to take advantage of your cardigans and your blouses. And what we're really going to focus on 
are sleeved, that are structured, puffed, or balloon, and shoulders that have that same effect to balance out the volume. Because if you think about it, capris are pretty close to the skin, at least the ones, at least the ones I'm showing you guys today. So for me to counteract that and still add balance to my look, I would go for something that's a little bit wider, a little bit bigger, a little bit more drama up top while everything is more fitted at the bottom. So I don't have it down here with me now, but I do have this balloon sleeve white top that I got off AliExpress years ago. I love the look of it. And if I were to style it up, I would take my white top, throw on my capris, and just to add a little bit of color, I would probably grab for my for my Steve Matic quilted flat bag. Now I got this bag a while ago. I believe I got this from Ross for like $35, $30 or so. I recently wore this out and for a while I didn't grab for it because I thought it'd be a little bit too big for me. I recently wore this out when I was running errands and baby, I fell in love. I felt grown, okay? So I really do like this bag and it was like so convenient to like work with just one hand. I don't know if Steve Madden is washing anyone from his team, but um, you know, if you make this in a mini version, you know, a little, a little bit smaller, you know, you can take my money, you know? I feel like what's missing from my closet right now is a smaller version of this or something similar, but I really do like this bag. So if I was styling that white balloon top that I was telling you guys about, I would throw this bag on to add that extra. Oh, it's upstairs. If I wasn't gonna go the red bag route and I still wanted that pop of color, I actually have this soft green bag that I got from ASOS some years back. It wasn't until recently I was looking at the bag and I feel like it might have been a Bottega dupe. I can't remember the exact name, but I'll show you guys a picture of the bag that I have. And I feel like that green could serve as my pop of color since I'm just wearing the white and black and if I want to jazz it up a bit. And just from like the overall feel of the top, I think I would go for chunky jewelry. Something that's chunky and kind of makes its own statement. That's the look I would go for. Now, another thing when it comes to cardigans, this piece has been very popular on social media lately. Like, it, it got to me. It got to me. And usually, things don't get to me, or they might get to me after the fact, or like long, long after. This one got to me, and I said, you know, let me try it out. Reese, oh, my feet, my feet not touching me around. <laughs> I recently grabbed this. I recently grabbed this cardigan from Zara the other day because I saw some loafers on sale, and I was like, okay, let me just make a Zara purchase. Now, the thing about this, I love the shape, I love the color, and if I was styling this, I feel like this would go great. With capris at the bottom, this is adding that volume up top, it's adding color, all of that. You don't even have to do too much. You can keep your chunky jewelry and grab a black or even a white purse and go out your business. What really brings us in is the shape and silhouette of this cardigan. The larger sleeves and shoulders match with the more structured waist. It kind of like cinches you in, gives you that volume up top, and also gives you a little bit more shape up top. Now, the one thing about this item, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. When it comes to Zara, I have my grievances, I'm gonna be honest. I don't really shop at Zara as often because typically I can find something similar for a fraction of the cost. And secondly, I feel like their quality is kind of all over the place. And especially with inflation, people are kind of getting a little bit ridiculous. And I feel like where we're at now, they kind of heard some of the concerns about quality and step things up a bit. But there's still some things where I'm like, the quality just isn't there for the price point you're asking for, to be honest. Now, though I love what this cardigan does, for the life of me, I do not understand why they use this fabric. With this type of fabric, I would I would assume that they would line it. So I just have a lot of <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts. This goes for $50. I personally don't think this is worth $50. And I actually found something similar that I'm waiting to come in the mail. I just held on to this just to show you guys what it looked like on, but I will be returning this. I love the shape, love the color, but I cannot justify the fabric and the finishing for what they're selling it for, if you get what I'm saying. Um, if it was like $25, $20, something less, I could reason with that. But for what this is and the fabric they chose, like, I, I, I don't know what this fabric reminds me of, but it reminds me of something from my childhood in not a good way. Like, not that it was traumatizing, but this is not the kind of fabric that I would expect in a sweater if you know what i mean like and it's not even like giving sesame street i just <laughs> i feel like this fabric is something that used to be used on things that wasn't made for clothing or was made for like winter lining i don't know but i have beef with this sweater i love the shape i love the look but i hate how it was constructed and the fabric that they use but if you want to you can get the look or get you a cardigan from somewhere else that gives you something similar and last in this category you have your basic oversized blouses these are your staple pieces in your wardrobe these are the pieces i'm constantly talking about y'all know this is one of my favorite shirts that i thrifted from the men's section something like this a white or ivory or even like a light blue 
pairing that with your capris, tossing on some sneakers, some mules, some slides, or even a small little kitten heel, that's gonna eat. It's really gonna and eat. For our very last category, category number three, you have your basic t-shirt. Now I realize it's actually kind of hard finding a good quality basic t-shirt. It took me a minute. Now I will say I heard a lot of talk about Uniqlo and their t-shirts. Now I don't know if there are any Uniqlo's in Atlanta so I wasn't able to go in person to test them out but, but before I went ahead and checked out in my cart I was able to find some other t-shirts elsewhere and I feel like it's just good practice to have a good basic t-shirt in your closet in white and black sometimes you don't want to do too much sometimes you don't want to do too extra but having a crispy white t-shirt or a black one that's plain has no logos has no designs but fits well and is of great quality and will last you that's its own little flex of its own so in styling a basic t-shirt i feel like you can take the approach of how you would style a basic pair of leggings my basic tees are slightly oversized a little bit boxy that's how i like the fit on me and i also kind of like t-shirts that come a little bit lower on the forearm is this the forearm? This is the thigh of the arm. What is that? Because this is the forearm. What? So on the thigh, the drumstick of the arm. <laughs> So on the arm, that's where I like for my t-shirts to hit. With this, I feel like I could throw on a chain belt. Like, you know those gold chain belts? I know I have one. I have no idea where it is. But if I can find it, I will show you guys the look. So if you want to elevate it a little bit, you can throw on your sling backs. Again, you can do your neutral colors or you can add a pop of color or a pop of pattern. Whichever one floats your bow, even a pop of metallic. Whatever works best for you, depending on what direction you want to take it in. If you want to elevate it a little bit, go for like a nice little heel or a nice little flat. Or if you want to keep it very comfortable, very chill, then you can go for something like a loafer, a flat, or even like a platform mule. And I would go for basic sunnies or some blockers. So I like the oval sunglasses that we've been talking about. Those are pretty trendy and also a classic look. Or maybe something oversized, like, oh, I'm just running errands or I don't, you know, or I don't want to talk too much. I'm trying to be low key. So for some sunglasses that are a little bit more out there, I have these. And I feel like these, are, these actually look cute with what I'm wearing now. But this tends to happen a lot. I realize that things are duped for other things, like literally like months or years after I bought them. So I think these are St. Laurent dupes. I also have these. These are Loewe dupes. I got these off. I think Shein. I know AliExpress has something similar and maybe also Amazon. If I can find those links, I'll leave them in the comments for you guys. Then I also got these over the top sunglasses. I don't know what the exact influence of this is, but it's kind of giving me Gucci vibes. I haven't worn these, but I feel like they kind of, oh, I, I don't know if they look crazy on me. See, that's the thing. I'm willing to try some over the top sunglasses, but I feel like a lot of times they don't really fit my face. So now I'm stuck with all these sunglasses that I can't wear, but I think these are cute. And then with a basic tee, you really can take it in any direction that you want to take it. You can throw on a wide brim straw hat. You can put on a, a baseball fitted cap. Whatever direction you want to take it in and whatever it makes you feel the most comfortable, I would say go for that. And the same way that we styled the black shirt, you can also style that with a white shirt. So next up, I thought I'd give you guys some of my inspiration for styling capris. And I mentioned some of these same influences in my spring trends video. Be sure to check out that video after this if you haven't already. But when it comes to capris, I feel like my style aesthetic or what I gravitate towards is heavily influenced by 80s media. So as I said before, a lot of the dressing that you'll see in Marilyn Monroe, Dorothy Dandridge, or the kid we love some the kid over here audrey hepburn the silhouettes that they would wear are things that i feel like also align to styling capris in a way that i would go about it and the same goes with films like dirty dancing and grease these are movies that i enjoyed and loved growing up and styles that many of the characters wore in those movies now recently i heard about beatnik fashion and i feel like this was kind of like an alt fashion that came about also during the 80s era so, so if you guys happen to know more about beatnik fashion please let me know because i'm going to be doing more research on it because i'm like it's the vibe i feel it for all of all the things i just mentioned i feel like a lot of those kind of tie in to like mod and that beat me fashion of the 80s and on the more recent end i believe it was jack moose 2023 he said capris down the runway and those are forever living in my head i want to recreate whenever i'm out and about on vacation on some sort of euro trip yeah it's loading. It's loading and it's like on standby for whenever the day comes. Then also in the ways that we style these looks throughout the three categories, I feel like those silhouettes also kind of draw and mirror some of what we see in matador dressing. I love the pomp of it all. I love the embroidery, the embellishment, the structure, the tailoring. So those are things that I draw inspiration from. So overall to recap, when it comes to styling capris, we want to make sure we're paying attention to balance and proportion. So if you have fitted capris, your bottom is going to be more sleek. So 
then maybe you might want to add more volume at the top or you can go the route of keeping it all figure hugging from top to bottom and maybe throwing on another layer on top whether it be a jean jacket or a leather jacket like i have here I didn't get to show you guys, but you guys, you guys get the feeling. And in this area, really pay attention to what works for your body type. Do you like a low waist, mid waist, high waist? Play around with those different placements to see what works best for you. Like I was saying before, in some areas, you can kind of treat styling caprice how you would treat styling biker shorts or how you would treat styling leggings. So whatever waist length looks best on you in those pieces should be able to carry over to your caprice. Next up, we want to pay attention to accessorizing. Whether you're going for flats or a simple over, for me, the go-to are kitten heel sling bags. Those are always going to hit. And then you can experiment with different belts, different hats, whatever works best for you and really take the time to shop your closets. See what accessories are in your closet that have kind of been ignored, kind of been abandoned, and see what you can make work with experimenting with a new look. And also we wanna pay attention to our jewelry. Are we going for a statement jewelry, chunky pieces, over the top pieces, or do you want something a little bit more refined, a little bit more dainty, a little bit more low key? See what works for you and whatever vibe you're on that day go from there. So for instance, for more minimal look, I'll probably say go for more dainty or simple jewelry. If you really want to elevate your look or really stand out or have that statement piece, this is where I would probably throw in more chunky jewelry. And depending on what you're doing or where you're going, you might want to keep it chunky throughout. You may want to focus on your neck. You may want to focus on bangles. It's all up to you what you're feeling in the moment and what makes sense for the setting you're going to be in while you're wearing the look. All that being said, that is all I have for you guys today. I hope this video makes you guys more confident in wearing capris or trying them out if you want to try them out this spring or summer. And whenever you do, if you use some of the tips from my video, please let me know. So I know at least this is helping somebody. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Go ahead and tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend like telephone to also subscribe and join in on the fun. I'm going to leave some videos for you guys on the screen. But until next time, bye guys.